Hey everyone and welcome back. In this video we're going to take the Endless Runner project that we have so far and we're going to add our main menu screen, the game over screen, and add in the logic to have the game actually wait for us to start the process before the level begins running. So it should look something a little bit like this in the background. So most of this is going to be fairly simple. We have some of this ready to go. Um, and in fact, the first thing that we can address is the level as it is at the moment just auto starts. So it begins playing itself, which is because we have in our blueprints, if we find the level manager, uh, we have our B is playing and this is set to be true by default. Um, so this is automatically going to play. So what we should be able to do if we've set this up correctly is turn this to false, hit compile and play again, and we should be paused. Uh, evidently, it looks as though we haven't actually uh, utilized this anywhere. So where this should be activated or checked is in our scrolling components, because remember that rather than having each object move itself, we have all of the objects just utilizing this one scrolling component so that the logic is shared between them. And here it is, that's all we've done. Uh, and here we can see all we've done is forgotten to actually implement this. So I've added the Boolean, obviously at some point forgotten to come back and actually implement it. So what we have, if we just recap the scrolling component is we're getting a reference to our level manager, and then we're taking the default speed that the level manager tells everything that it has to move. So all we want to do is between this, we're gonna just pull up a pair and get a reference to our level manager and just double check that this is valid. Not really too important because we uh, obviously need a level manager in every level anyway. Like I've mentioned in the past, you'd want to do some proper error checking and uh, making sure that the references are valid. But this is just another way that we can bypass getting any errors coming back. And then if it is, we want to find out whether or not uh, B is ready is true. So we'll just type get is, we'll get the is playing and we can do a branch check off of this and we'll just plug the branch check into our valid pin so we're only going to do this if we have a valid reference to our level manager and then we'll plug this in to the movement update so if we hit compile and save that uh, what this will do now or should do is when we toggle this uh, we will easily be able to control whether the level is moving or not another thing we can do as well is if we just expose this rather than coming into the class we can just now come into the level make sure we've got our level manager and we can toggle this on and off. So if we toggle this to be true, then that will mean that we're going to have the scrolling movement. And of course, if we toggle this to false, then this will have us paused. So now that we have this implemented, this is pretty much the start of the level setup. So that means we're not going to see the level scrolling towards us until we've pressed play. So the next thing to do will be to create our menu and our play button. So I'm gonna keep this nice and simple. Uh, all we want is a new folder for our UI, as we're gonna have a couple of different menus here. We will go in and create a new user interface or widget blueprint. And I'm gonna call this one WBP underscore start. I'll call this the start menu. And inside of this, I'm just gonna make two very simple buttons. So I'll drag a button in, we will make sure that the anchor for this is center and we'll just put the position as zero and zero. And then we'll set the alignment to 0.5 to center this. And that's on both X and Y. And then we can move this up the screen. So if we just round this down to 300 or minus 300, and then we can just make the button a little bit bigger. So maybe 200 and or make that 300 and uh, maybe something like 100. And in fact, I think that can move down a little bit again. So I'll make that minus 200 because then all we want to do is add some text onto this. I'm gonna make the text a darker color and just to make the font look a little bit more pleasing, I'm just gonna change this from bold to light. And we can probably make this a bit bigger, like 35. And there we go. So we have our first button now. I'm gonna call this one button underscore start or just button start. Uh, collapse that down so that we can copy this. So control C on that button, control V when you've got the canvas selected. I'm gonna call this one a button quit. Uh, we'll make this one 200 on the Y. So it's equally spaced apart from the other one and zero on the X, so it's in the middle. And we're gonna change the text obviously on these as well. So we're gonna have this one saying start and this one will say quit. Okay, so our two very simple main menu buttons. Now with this, uh, we also want to come in and we can get rid of the pre-construct, we can get rid of the event tick. What we want to say is if the quit button is clicked, then we will quit game. 
so we'll call the quit game function and if start is pressed so we'll do an on start clicked then we want to get a call to our level manager and toggle that boolean we've just been playing about with so the next thing is we're going to make a variable and this variable will be the level manager ref change the variable type to level manager make that an object reference and just make sure that we expose on spawn and make this visible so this just means that we can actually pass in a reference from the level manager which is going to be the class which will create and display the widget. So that means we don't need to do anything to actually store the reference, this will always just have one. So with the level manager, we'll do this functionality first. When this is pressed, we just want to set the is ready boolean, or set is playing, sorry. Okay, so that will toggle that, and that will start the level moving. So if we hit compile and save, we're gonna go back to the level manager, back to the event graph, and on the event begin play, if we don't already have one, we're gonna create one now. So we'll find the event begin play, I'm going to come down here and we will create a blueprint widget. So create widget and we're going to pass in our start menu. We, as I said, we will automatically have this exposed and we can just pull off of the level manager ref and we will just use the self reference. So we'll pass in a reference of our self and then we're going to add this to viewport. Okay, so if we compile and save that, we can do a quick test. So we now have our menu showing. We can press start and this will begin moving. Now, of course, uh, we can also see there that the quit works. Uh, and we could see that because I forgot to remove it from the screen. So the next thing, we'll go back to the start menu. And off of here, we're just going to pull off and also say remove from parent. So that just makes sure that we actually remove the widget so it doesn't stay with us when we're playing. So we'll try that again. And there we go. We now have the start of the game proper. So final thing, very simple. We're just going to take the menu we've just created. So we will duplicate this. I'm going to call this one the widget blueprint underscore game over or end menu. Uh, I'm going to go for game over and all we really need to do, I'm going to leave these buttons, like I said, very simple. I'm going to change this one to a button restart and I will change the text to say restart. And then we can come into the graph and quite simply uh, the quit button is going to do the same thing. So this is going to be when you've hit an object or an obstacle. This will come up so you get the option to quit the game entirely or replay. So on restart pressed, uh, slightly different. We're just going to open level and the level I want to open is the only one we have, which is going to be a main. And then of course we just need to implement this. And the best place I think we can do this is in the level manager. We already have our game over function. So this is kind of set up and ready for us to go anyway. Uh, so we're wiping the level speed and the is playing is being set to false. So everything will now stop moving. Uh, really, they both do the same thing now I think about it, but um, that's fine. <laughs> we can probably make use of these in different ways if we were to flesh this out. And the last things I want to do is we're going to come in here. We will create a widget again. And this widget is going to be our game over. We don't really need the reference, so we can actually come back in. And just for tidiness, we can get rid of this. Uh, we're not going to be making any calls to the level manager, so compile and save that. Uh, refresh this node to get rid of that, and then we'll just add this to viewport. So this one again should just kind of automatically work. Everything's kind of set up quite well here to allow for this. The only thing I've just thought of is that we're not going to get access to our mouse again. So as I had to click into the viewport there to start the game, uh, it does then set that to be uh, the input mode of game only. So what we want to do here is we're going to get the player controller and from the player controller we just want to set the input mode. I'm going to make that UI only. So that means that we'll have control again to click back onto the buttons. Uh, that doesn't mean that we'll get the mouse back so we're going to pull off of here and we'll set mouse visible. Uh, it actually comes under set show mouse cursor and we'll set that to be true. And this does raise another problem that I'm aware of. Um, I'll just show you it first of all, and then we will fix it. It's very, very simple to fix, but we're gonna press play, we'll press start. Uh, we will get rid of the mouse by clicking in. And then if we hit an obstacle, we'll get our mouse back. Now, what we'll get is when we hit restart, if we go back in, press start again, um, we won't have control of the player because the game controller, this is stored in the memory when you go between levels so it actually remembers that the last thing that we set this to be and we're very specific about this so it's going to make sure that it remembers that we want to be in the ui only mode which means we have no input control whatsoever like i said very very simple though we're just going to go back to the event begin play on the event graph when we have our menu spawned um, rather than 
hard coding this variable here, what I'm going to do is create another function. I'm going to call this one start game because that's one thing is that we really shouldn't be changing variables from outside of classes. Sometimes it's a nice easy way to test things. Uh, sometimes it doesn't really, it, it can be quite safe and it doesn't matter anyway. And in this case, it's kind of safe, but it's just going to be slightly tidier if we set the is playing on the start game function call. So we'll set that to be true. And then that also gives us this extra control that we can come in. We can get the uh, player controller again. And this time we want to set the input mode and we want this to be a game only. Now this also gives us another benefit is that we know that we've now pressed the menu. So we know instantly that we don't want to have the mouse cursor. At the moment when we press start, we still have the mouse cursor and we need to click in again. So we can actually bypass this issue as well. I'm gonna pull off of here and we'll set the show mouse cursor. I'm gonna set this one to be false. So then all we need to do, a nice quick simple fix is we're gonna go back to the start menu. Rather than doing this now, we're gonna remove that and we're gonna call start game. Now, just make sure that we've compiled and saved this, otherwise it's not gonna correctly find the function in this class. And then if we hit compile and save, what we find now, exactly the same thing's happening apart from we also have that extra controller through the player controller. So if we hit start, the mouse was, uh, or the cursor was instantly hidden, instantly game control of the uh, game mode input system. And then if we press restart, we're gonna have the mouse come back now. But then again, as soon as we press play, we have actual control of the player. So I just wanted to show all of those steps just to get those concepts making sense because that's some things I can always kind of tell when a game has been made in Unreal because uh, when you see especially new developers uh, putting out builds and demonstrations and stuff you always have this kind of lingering mouse cursor for a while or uh, people have shared demos around where the input doesn't work when you go from level to level and it's just a slight misunderstanding of how to use the input mode so rather than trying to just explain the concept i wanted to take this opportunity to like really show what causes what issue and then how to fix it so hopefully that has proven useful slightly longer than if i'd just done the correct approach first time um, but hopefully like i said now you'll know how to call these different input modes and exactly how to get rid of things like the mouse cursor from showing when you don't want it, how to get it to return when you're back in the menu and things like that. So that is the menu section of this game done. Probably only a couple of videos left now to add in the things like the camera lurping when you die and the particle effects. And then that's really wrapped up the whole project. So I'm gonna leave that video here for today. As always, if you enjoy these videos or find them useful, please do leave a like and share the video around, that always helps. And of course, don't forget to hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel. And as ever, thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.